but first to Hong Kong. The art world is in a buzz. Hong Kong is gearing up to be much more than just a hot spot for rich art collectors. Every morning, Tobias Berger takes the ferry from Victoria Harbor to Kowloon on the northern shore. The curator loves taking this route to his job. Hong Kong has always been one of the world's most exciting cities, but at the moment, it's politically, economically and culturally the city where you simply have to be. Hong Kong has only recently become a serious contender on the global art market. In the past, the focus was on making money and shopping. But now, this international hub for finance and trade is to get an art museum worthy of it along this huge coastal plot. The project initiated by the city of Hong Kong is called M Plus, and Berger is helping to create it. When M Plus is finished in 2017, it will take up about 60,000 square meters, from which 20,000 are planned for exhibitions. That will put us on a level with MoMA in New York in terms of the amount of exhibition space, which then will have to be filled with its own collection of film, art and popular culture. Plus will be part of a sprawling arts district on the coast of West Kowloon, which will include stages and concert halls, all led by world-renowned specialists. The master plan, as conceived by architect Sir Norman Foster, visions of the future. But what's already reality is here under the arched roof of the Convention Center, the fifth Art Hong Kong, the newest branch of Art Basel. The art fair from Switzerland is the world's most important, and a year ago it bought a majority stake in Hong Kong. This is where the global art jet set rubs elbows with Asia's new moneyed class. Everyone profits. William Lim is a Hong Kong collector, and one of the few here who supports the local art scene. Contemporary art needs a lot more introduction, even to the very uh, wealthy people here. I think they need to start to, you know, it, it's much easier for them to appreciate like a, 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 a traditional art or, or classic uh, painting and all that. But contemporary art needs a lot of promotion. That goes for new art from the West, too, which Asian collectors don't find immediately accessible. That's a lesson German gallery owners have quickly learned here. Asian collectors need trust, and you have to build that up, which doesn't happen as quickly as we're used to with European collectors. So you have to invest time, come back each year, and be patient. Someone who no longer needs that support is Damien Hurst. The British Enfant Terrible goes over well in Asia, too. So has the fifth Art Hong Kong been a success? <laughs> Since Art Basel officially took over the fair this year, it's become one of the three most important global fairs and the place to see Asian art. It's unbelievable how quickly that happened and in such a professional manner. The fair is one world, the other is that of the artists living in Hong Kong. Does the city have what it takes to be an art metropolis? Elaine Eng from Art Asia Pacific magazine is skeptical. Only a few non-commercial spaces offer artists the chance for exhibitions, like here at the Goethe Institute. Hong Kong is very dynamic, but it's very imbalanced. Right now, it's so heavily focused on the commerce side. But at the same time, I don't think commercial galleries, auction houses, and an art fair make a healthy art scene. That's set to change soon, here in the center of Kowloon. A preview of what's to come for the Western VIP visitors of the art fair, an authentic Chinese breakfast with entertainment. Tobias Berger is one of the hosts. On offer is dim sum, the traditional Chinese selection of dishes in small portions. Those in charge of the planned M Plus Museum want to raise interest for art in Hong Kong. Here does M Viertel. This area next to the museum is our neighborhood, so over the next few years, we want to put on a lot of exhibitions and other events here and get to know the area. 
The first show is a kind of obstacle course with works by young artists from Hong Kong in unused spaces in the neighborhood. Ulick Wai's dark video collages are meant to give visitors the creeps. The artist is also a filmmaker, which may be why the exhibition space is reminiscent of the set of a horror movie. We move on to a glitzy event on the sidelines of the fair, an opening at Gagosian, one of the world's most important galleries. Everything here can be described in superlatives. They're showing work by one of the world's most expensive photo artists, Andreas Gorski from Germany. Along with Gagosian, several other significant galleries have opened branches in this tax haven. Hong Kong is still the kind of free market gateway to Asia. And in terms of accessibility, it's a crossroads where it's still a crossroads between Asia, Europe, America. It's, it's a hub. Tobias Berger is also betting on this hub. For him, Hong Kong is the only place in China where a museum of the kind he envisions can be set up. We're trying to create a platform where we can discuss and exhibit certain things independently of any censorship or pressure from above and stemming from Hong Kong itself, a free city with a very free and open way of thinking. Berger and his colleagues are hoping to make this hot spot of art buying into a true art metropolis. <laughs>